Hello everyone, welcome to yet another video in this The Clown Decade on the island where we literally cannot deport anyone. And you might think that I am exaggerating here, but I am not, and it is causing an awful lot of issues. And it is caused by people exactly like this. Protest group marches against Portland Asylum Seekers Barge Plan. So for those of you that don't know, in an attempt to save the six to eight million a day that it is costing the taxpayer to house illegal migrants, the government have decided to put some high density housing barges into ports around the UK. And naturally, idiot leftists have decided that no, this is inhumane, this isn't good enough, and well, we may as well see what they have to say. Protest groups have gathered to oppose plans to house up to 500 asylum seekers in a barge off the Dorset coast. The Bibby Stockholm is due to arrive in Portland Port in the coming weeks to house men claiming asylum. Specifically men, not families, not children, not women, men. Stand Up To Racism held a rally and branded the plan completely inhumane. The No To The Barge group held a separate march. So there were two lots of leftists there. Stand Up To Racism and No To The Barge. Due to it being quote unquote inhumane, even though it is probably more humane than most council houses around the UK. More than 80, 80 Stand Up To Racism activists, trade unionists and church and community groups gathered at Portland Port to march to Portland Community Hospital. Organiser... Lynn Hubbard said, housing refugees on barges is completely inhumane and has to stop. I, I don't know on what grounds it is inhumane. They are being given a room. We will continue to protest, but at the same time, welcoming the refugees. Just not in our town and not in a barge for some reason. Trade unionist Grafton Straker described the barge as a prison. Well, they have come here illegally. This country was built on immigration after the Second World War. Complete and utter lie. We had pretty much net emigration since the war due to the £10 POM scheme and the wind rushes greatly over-exaggerated how much we actually needed them in that we didn't need them because we didn't actually have enough jobs to go around post-war. These people are fleeing from war-torn countries. I didn't know Albania was war-torn. We need to welcome them here, he said. A separate march organised by the No to the Barge group left from Gateway Pillars shortly afterwards heading for the port. Its Facebook page said that the government had not adequately considered the harmful effects on all the services of our treasured seaside communities. So they are just NIMBYs and it's the type of NIMBYism that I can completely appreciate and support because it is against ridiculous government intervention. Because frankly, all of these people on this barge should have been deported already. And that's not the only big frame plan that the government had to house migrants. Government plans to house migrants in marquees across country. A source tells Sky News the plans are at an early stage but being worked on by the Home Office because, again, it's impossible to deport anyone and therefore we need to house absolutely everyone that comes in this country no matter how they get in it. So now not only do we have hotels but we also have barges all over the ports in the UK to house these people and also we've got marquees popping up everywhere when really these people should just be turned around as soon as they get to the beaches on Dover and this is pretty much the whole news story by the way just that the government is planning to put marquees up across the country but it's in early stages but it also has some stats so on Thursday alone this was a Thursday of last month 312 people crossed making the monthly total for June 3303 higher than the total for June of last year. Yes, the number of migrants coming over keeps getting higher and higher and higher year on year, probably because we can't deport any of them. And the plans have attracted numerous critics with opposition MPs, campaign groups, and some official bodies warning they could breach international human rights laws. Well, then we should just leave the ECHR, because if that's stopping us from defending our own borders, then it is a court that is not fit for purpose. The government did not deny the reports, with a spokesman telling Sky News, We have been clear that our use of hotels to house asylum seekers is unacceptable. There are currently more than 51,000 asylum seekers in hotels, costing the UK, UK taxpayer £6 million a day. And I think that's a lowball estimate that they keep using as well. And he goes on to say that we're working very hard to house the asylum seekers a bit more cheaply. Why not just fast track their processing and deport them? Because we can't deport them, as I keep saying. And since we're on the subject of housing migrants in hotels, a spa hotel faces legal action after it fires all of its staff to house migrants. Strady Park Hotel in Wales is being taken to the High Court over plans to put up some 240 asylum seekers 
in its 76 rooms. So it appears that the government just came along, offered this hotel a large sum of money to house asylum seekers, and the hotel just went, cool, we'll do that. Right, I'm afraid to tell all the staff here that you're all fired because we're putting a load of migrants in here. And new stories like this will appear all across the country. I know in my town, there's an old dilapidated hotel that they've done up for asylum seekers now. Luckily, my MP pushed and pushed and pushed the Home Office so that only women and children will be in that hotel, and that's a lot better than in some other areas where they've had to obviously take all the men because nobody wants all the men <laughs> because just men cause problems, as anyone would expect. A four-star hotel faces legal action after sacking all of its staff to make space for migrants. Strady Park Hotel in Llanethly, Carmarthenshire, is set to put up as many as 241 asylum seekers. Every time I read a number to do with this story, that number just randomly changes, even within the article. In its 76 rooms, despite opposition from local residents and the council, 95 full and part-time staff were told last week that they would all be losing their jobs within the last day being July 10. Weddings and all events after that date have been cancelled. In an attempt to block the scheme, Carmarthenshire County Council is talking to hoteliers and home office contractors to the High Court on Friday, July 7. It claims that they have changed the use of the hotel without planning permission, which is technically true. It will be the first of three legal actions in the next week as two further councils go to the High Court on July 12 and 13 in a bid to prevent the Home Office from turning two former air bases, RAF Scampton and Lincolnshire, and Wethersfield in Essex into shelters for migrants. And this is the problem. This is what happens when you can't deport any of the people coming to this country illegally. You have problems all over the place where you've got to put these people somewhere, otherwise they just disappear into the ether, but absolutely no council wants them there because, quite frankly, everyone knows that they're just going to cause trouble. Though this story does get funnier as this is in a Labour constituency, Dame Nia Griffith, the Labour MP for Llanethly, said it is absolutely shocking the way that the staff have been treated from the beginning. Just kept in the dark with no information, it is a disgraceful and degrading way to treat the workers. I have to agree. The hotel owners, Clear Springs and ministers of the Home Office should hang their heads in shame. I don't think it's the Home Office's fault. Ministers are being forced to deliver hotels for migrants as the number of people crossing the channel increases, with a record 3,824 reaching the UK last month, that was June, a fifth higher than the 3,140 that arrived in June last year. And of course, this makes me laugh that it's a Labour constituency, because it is Labour that is helping make it impossible to deport these people. So they have to be housed somewhere, but my God, if they are housed in their constituency, they will fight tooth and nail to have them put literally anywhere else, apart from Rwanda. Anyway, if all that wasn't bad enough, in that we can't house them in hotels because no one wants to spend the money on it, which is fair enough, we can't house them in barges because the local communities think there are too many people in those barges, and it's inhumane even though it's been used for the exact same purpose in Germany and the Netherlands, and with the early stages of the plan for marquees to be sprouted up across the country, what is another bright idea coming from the <laughs> senior Tories? Senior Tory encourages Brits to welcome channel migrants into their own homes, Former Secretary of State Brandon Lewis has endorsed a new report which reveals the cost of Britain's migrant crisis, with some radical proposals on how to tackle it. Apparently, one of them being, why don't, why don't we just tell, why don't we just tell Brits that they need to open up their homes to these illegal migrants? You know these people that have broken our laws and have absolutely no respect for the law of the land. Clearly, as the first thing they do when they come into the country is commit a crime. Why, why don't you just open your homes up to these people? How about you just get them on a plane to Rwanda? A top Tory has called on Brits to open up their homes to asylum seekers who cross the channel in a desperate bid to address the eye-watering cost of housing them at the taxpayer's expense. So instead we just have to directly take on a cost of housing them ourselves. Brandon Lewis has backed a new report from the prominent think tank Policy Exchange which says the galvanisation of voluntary spirit could drive down the 2.2 billion annual costs of housing migrants in hotels and barges. Or again, just send them away. The report cites the generosity shown by Brits towards Ukrainian refugees as an example of Brits willing to open their homes to those fleeing into the country. Yes, well, those people are actually fleeing a war and their homes are genuinely being destroyed. And the culture shock of Ukrainians coming over to Britain is not as great as that of, say, Syrians or Afghanistanis coming over to Britain. 
the biggest culture shock with Ukrainians is that they are surprised by how little white people there are in our cities. People from Albania appear to join drug gangs. It adds that settled British migrants from Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq and Syria could also aid the rehoming of asylum seekers with their specific cultural assets. The report reveals the total annual cost of asylum related spending is now £3.5 billion, including hotel accommodation, allowances, healthcare and school places. Yeah, what? Asylum seekers are getting more money from the state than I am. And I was born here. But not only that, the, the report is stating that it would be a good idea for people who reside in Britain who are actually from Afghanistan, Iran and other Middle Eastern countries to rehome asylum seekers from those countries. Basically, what this report is saying is that we need even bigger colonies of people from other countries in the UK, when really a much better solution would probably be in one of the neighbouring countries, we just send a load of money. In fact, it might even be better just to ask permission from the government of, say, Pakistan or Azerbaijan. Ask permission to have British colonies there, where all we really do for that is just house asylum seekers from... Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Syria, wherever, because the culture shock will be much less than it would be if they go to a neighbouring country. But no, our huge-brained Tory MPs are saying just, you know, just have bigger colonies in the UK. And that's not even the worst part of it. So Amnesty is handed to 10,000 small boat migrants who reached the UK in the past four months in a major concession by the government to get its illegal migration bill through Parliament. So... The Tories at the moment, and specifically Sunak's cabinet, are trying to get this illegal migration bill through, which I have covered in the past. And when it would basically say that you do not get treated as an asylum seeker or fully treated as an asylum seeker if you come to this country from a safe country, i.e. if you cross the English Channel and come from France, you have come from a safe country, we can fast track deport you. That's essentially what it says, which is obviously fair enough because there ain't no war happening in France. So nearly 10,000 small boat migrants who reached Britain in the past four months were last night handed an amnesty from the government's tough new immigration measures. Home Secretary Suella Braverman has previously said any migrants who arrive since March by irregular routes, such as on dinghies across the channel, would be barred from making asylum claims. Good idea. But in a major concession to get the government's illegal migration bill through Parliament, it would now apply only to migrants who reach the UK after legislation gains royal assent, because originally... It was that anyone from the date where news of this bill was put forward, I think it was like 7th of March or something like that, would have no amnesty and be liable to that particular law. But obviously the Lords have said that's not fair and a load of Labour MPs have said that's not fair, so pushed against this. And to be honest, in relative terms, it's probably a small concession if I assume this law was going to work as it states. But I don't think it is because nothing this government puts forward works as it states. So that's where we're up to with housing migrants we can't deport. We want to put them in barges, local councils say no. We want to put them in hotels, local councils say no. The government realises they can't really put them anywhere, so senior Tory MP says, why doesn't everyone just open up their house and let them in? Obviously people are going to say no to that, and yet, despite all this pressure and the fact that they are having massive trouble actually housing these migrants, what does the government do? Well, it concedes and says, right, you know the 50,000 we already have? Well, we're going to get 10,000 more in these hotels, in these marquees, in these barges that we can't actually get off the ground. And this is all because we can't deport people. And I'm going to go through some examples right now of just how crazy the UK system is when it comes to deporting people. So the first one is from eight years ago. So this problem has been going on for well over a decade, really. Rude, violent people in Manchester drive immigrant back to Iran. Arash Aria, who walked into Manchester police station demanding to be deported, speaks of his loneliness and disillusionment in the city. Now, as someone who lives in Manchester, I genuinely find this story quite hard to believe. I do not believe he wants to go back to Iran because people are rude and violent to him. The city is a classic multicultural hub so it would be strange if it was just one Iranian dude who wanted to get deported back to Iran but according to the story it is so let's hear the story. Arash Aria 25 was described as agitated and angry as he told officers he wanted to leave after living illegally in the city for a decade but all was not what it seemed as officers from Manchester city centre police station found when they contacted the home office to check Mr Aria's status they discovered he was actually in the country entirely legally. Having 
arrest him on suspicion of unlawfully entering Britain. They had no option but to de-arrest Mr. Aria, who lives in a tower block in central Manchester, and send him on his way. So a man walks into a police station, says, I want to be deported, I want to leave this country, and literally the police just say, no, you have to stay here. Which to me is genuinely quite mad. The man is basically asking for his visa to be revoked, and the police say, no, you have to stay here. Mr. Aria told the Telegraph he had been left frustrated and disappointed by local people's rudeness and his failure to find work. I, I somehow think it is the second more than the first reason there. The people of Manchester have not been welcoming, he said. It's words, violence, many things. I try to ignore people, but I'm fed up now. It, it's violence? Did you not go to the police about the violence? He went to the police to be deported, but didn't go for about him being violently attacked. I, you know, I doubt this story. I don't get the respect I should here. Mail arrested earlier at our front desk when he demanded to be returned home to Iran as he had enough of Manchester after 10 years. GMP City Centre on Twitter. People are not friendly here in Manchester. When they are rude to me, I don't like it. Particularly in the last year, it's got really bad, said Mr. Aria, who was dressed in black tracksuit bottoms and a black t-shirt with a silver pendant on a long chain. I have literally no idea why they've just described what he was wearing, but I just read it verbatim. I try to be friendly and polite, but they just laugh at me because I'm foreign and look at me strangely. He added, I'm not working right now. I used to work as a waiter and a barman, but now people won't give me shit for no reason. Possibly because you're a bad worker, I don't know. It's affecting my head, my dreams, the way I think. I am on benefits, but I don't want that. I am in full health and I want to work. Everyone wants to work, to have a dream, but I can't achieve my dreams here. I want to try and do something with my life. I want to get a good job and save money and do something big be somebody uh, i think this is why he wants to go home to iran he's not having a good time when it comes to finding decent work here so he wants to go home because he thinks he'll have a better chance in iran it's a culture shock thing i imagine he's been here for 10 years he doesn't appear to have got citizenship uh, it appears that he's not integrated very well so no wonder he wants to go so why don't we help him with that why are we instead actually giving him the money to stay here, but not the money to go back home when he clearly wants to. That's insane. <laughs> Mr. Arias said that he was in limbo after sending documents to the Home Office while his Iranian passport had expired. I want to go back to my city, Shiraz, in southwest Iran. My aunt and my family will look after me there because my mother will stay here in England, he said. I am just waiting for my passport to come through and then I will book my flights and start my life out there. Detective Sergeant David Henschel, who was on duty at the time of the incident and publicised the incident on Twitter, said Mr. Aria began shouting and screaming at the police front desk, all because he couldn't be deported. We just refused to deport a man who is asking, in fact, begging to be deported. And, and the UK is just so crazy we can't do it. It was a strange case, that's why I tweeted about it, considering everything that's going on with refugees at the moment. I got a call from the staff downstairs at the front desk who said he was being aggressive and throwing his bike around, so I went down to help. He was very angry and just kept saying how much he hated Manchester. He didn't look drunk, I didn't smell any alcohol on him, he just seemed very angry. We tried to ask him what the catalyst was, but he just kept saying he had been here 10 years and he hated it. Maybe he just wanted a free flight home, I'm just not sure. Then, then we should give it him. We should give it him and say, you're going to go back, you're not allowed back. We, th that is what we should do. He didn't look like he was sleeping rough, he was wearing nice clothes, and came in with an expensive mountain bike which he kept throwing on the floor. This man really wanted to get out of Britain, and we just, we can't accommodate it. It's crazy. It is absolutely nuts. So moving from a man who had done nothing wrong but was desperately trying to get deported, to someone who doesn't want to be deported but did something that absolutely deserves it. Iranian man who raped his lodger in London can't be deported in case he is persecuted in his homeland for being a convicted rapist. Believe it or not, I don't particularly care. Get him out of here. An Iranian rapist has won the right to stay in the UK after a judge decided he would face persecution in his native country, report states. Despite apparently lying about being a former employee of MI5, his appeal against deportation was successful. Get him out of here. A whole lot of them are doing this. A whole lot of them are just lying to stay in the country. And we can't punish them for it. We can't punish them in any way apart from putting them in our already overcrowded prisons, for God's sake. The Immigration Tribunal was told that the man first entered Britain in 1992 as a student, the Sun reports. 
The newspaper adds that the man referred to as XX raped a female lodger living in the same house in London in 2000. And this is from 2023, by the way, this report. He was convicted a year later and jailed for seven years. Immigration papers state he has never given any indication of showing insights into the impact on his victim and that he has not participated in any rehabilitation or course. My mind genuinely boggles at this story. Firstly, that it's only seven years for a rape. That, that to me, seems ridiculously low. Second, that he wasn't deported full stop. And three, I, d I have no idea how his visa has lasted for over 30 years. But here we are stuck with this rapist who is in fact actually free at the moment. Because we are just incapable, our justice system is incapable of punishing someone to the full extent of the law. Unless, let's face it, unless they're a straight white male. And then if they're a trans woman, they get to be put in the female prisons where they end up sexually molesting women. Our entire judicial system is just a joke. And this isn't even the worst story to do with it. After the conclusion of his jail term, authorities wanted to deport the man in 2005, but he launched a successful interim appeal. Despite no documentary evidence, the man has clung to a claim that he was previously recruited by the UK Secret Services. The man insisted MI5 headhunted him as he used to mix in social circles with links to the Iranian embassy in London. A security service has refused to shed light on the claim one way or another. He also shared his fears of receiving the death penalty for his rape conviction if he returns to Iran. Well, to be quite frank, we should probably just have the death penalty for rapists here as well, so that shouldn't make a difference either way. The judge appeared to give some weight to a third reason given, which was his criticism of the Iranian regime. In his ruling, Judge John Keith said that the man could remain in the UK due to the risk of persecution he faces. He also accepted that there was indeed evidence the man had criticised the Iranian regime on a website, and authorities' knowledge of this meant a real risk of interrogation and extensive detention. Far too much compassion for a man who raped a woman, methinks, but I suppose that's uh, how everything's going these days in the UK. If you're a rapist of women, you get thrown in jail for a few years, and then absolutely nothing else happens. You don't even have to go through a rehabilitation process, apparently. I don't understand how we are still functioning. Anyway, if you want to hear the worst story from all the examples I have of our completely broken deportation system, Iraqi immigrant 28 stabbed university student 18 in a park in broad daylight because he wanted to be deported, caught his. A man couldn't be deported. A again, it's another example of someone desperate to get out of this country and go back to Iraq. And he got so desperate that he decided that potentially ending another man's life was worth the punishment. I, this just reminds me of people in the 1800s who would commit a crime just so that they could get a free trip to Australia and make a new life there. The way that the government got around that was just giving people the opportunity to get to Australia very cheaply, so that in that case they would commit less crimes. What do you know? Less crime was committed. Same thing's gonna happen here. I mean, we're going to probably have to sacrifice a few more people in Britain for this, but that's how broken our deportation system is at the moment, and it's horrendous. A 28-year-old Iraqi immigrant stabbed a university student because he wants to be deported from Britain, a court has heard. Teenager Ellis Wheeler, a fresher at Solent University student, was left fighting for his life after Rebaz Mohammed attacked him as he was walking through a park on his way back from the gym. Southampton Crown Court heard how Mohammed pulled a kitchen knife from under his coat and lunged at the 18-year-old's back, and he punctured his lung in broad daylight in December 2022. The court was told how Mohammed could have killed his victim after willingly inflicting serious injury with a weapon to achieve his goals. While Mr Wheeler managed to escape, he passed out before being rushed to hospital where he underwent surgery. Mohammed, who came to the UK illegally on a small boat, was arrested at the scene. Comes to the UK, wants to get deported, we can't even deport him. He gets desperate, stabs a man. It's unbelievable how ridiculous a situation we are in in the UK, and nobody seems to want to fix it. And anyone that does is either kicked out of Parliament or is hounded down by the opposition of the House. It is absurd. We are living in the clown decade, and unfortunately these things are only going to get worse before they get better. The 28-year-old, who had previously served a prison term, appeared at Southampton Crown Court after pleading guilty to grievous bodily harm with intent and possessing a knife blade. Following the incident, which occurred at Hoglands Park, Southampton, Hampshire, last December, Mohammed was sentenced to six years with a four-year extended licence. Just send him home. Just send him back to Iraq. Don't let him come back. That would be the best thing you can do. But no, 
We have to keep in here as much as we can because deporting anyone is racist or something. The court went on to hear how his 18-year-old victim missed his exams and still struggles to sleep as he is dogged by anxiety. I, I don't blame him. Getting stabbed is one of the single most painful experiences you can have in life. Shocking CCTV footage showed the moment Mohammed approaches the first-year student shortly before the savage attack. The pair spoke briefly as the 28-year-old asked him if he knew kickboxing before taking a swing at him. Afterward, the student escaped but lost consciousness as a heroic friend called 999 and put pressure on his horrific wound until police arrived. And the guy's in jail for six years. No. Unacceptable. This is a ridiculous situation we're in. And you think voting Labour next election is going to fix any of this? Absolutely not. If anything, they'll probably give the Iraqi a medal for braving that famously dangerous English channel. Amazingly, this story, somehow, somehow this story gets worse. In prosecuting, Andrew Houston said that Mohammed knew he had to do something to be deported and had spoken to people who knew the immigration system. So he asked people, how can I be deported? And he was advised to stab someone. That is how bad we are at deporting people. Mr. Houston said that Mohammed had previously been cautioned for criminal damage and battery. And in May 2022, he was jailed for 12 weeks for racially aggravated harassment and stalking. I am genuinely stocked. And stocked? I am so shocked I can't even find proper words anymore. But I am genuinely shocked that he was jailed for anything racially aggravated because typically minorities don't get hit with the racially aggravated charges. Richard Tut, defending, said that Mohammed, who had lived in a hotel in Bournemouth, Dorset, had been making what efforts he could to be deported but had no work and no money. Why would, he need, why would he need to put any effort in? Just say, look, I came here illegally. I plead guilty to it. Please send me home. Can't even do that. We cannot do that. It is impossible to deport anyone from here, even scumbag criminals like this and the other rapist. Mr. Tut said he believed from what he had been told that he needed to commit an offence that was serious enough. He presents as a very naive person. He's experienced remorse or at least sorrow. In sentencing Mohammed... Judge Brian Forster Casey berated him for inflicting the horrific injuries as to achieve his own ends. He said, when anyone carries out an attack with a knife, it is down to chance. This was an indiscriminate attack. Any member of our community could have been the victim. You were willing to inflict a serious injury with a weapon to achieve your own end. You could have killed the victim. And so what do you do? You send him to jail for six years. Deport him, don't let him come back or bring the death penalty back. Like seriously, I don't care if it's a bad deterrent. I do not care if it's about deterrence anymore. If people are willing to go to that length for any, any ends, they deserve to die. It's as simple as that. It's justice. But at the very least, you've got to be able to deport illegal immigrants. And we can't even do that. So, I, I mean, think about what's going on in Mohammed's head at the moment. He's said for ages, I want to be deported. Clearly been asking around on how to do that. And the main answer he's got is, oh, well, you have to break the law somehow so he goes to an extreme and stabs someone and he's still not being deported his brain must be going oh my god how the hell do i get out of this country and a lot of people in the general public are saying how the hell do we get rid of people who come here illegally and nobody has an answer because there's far too much compassion for anyone who isn't british unfortunately and it's the clown decade it's only going to get worse it's only going to get worse so apologies for the black pilling video today, but I felt like this was the type of video I couldn't go on without making. It's I've been watching stories like this go on forever, really, for at least the last two or three years. Well, probably since the start of the channel, to be honest. And I've only seen the problems get worse. And I didn't realise that things were so bad here that it is literally impossible to deport anyone who not only doesn't want to be here but actively goes out of their way to try and kill someone to get out of here, and we still can't deport that person. It is the exact same problem that Britain was having when it came to deporting people to Australia. People would purposefully commit crimes to try and get there. The only thing is that we're not even deporting them. We're just not letting them leave the country whatsoever, despite the fact that literally everybody, apart from the radical leftists and the new elite, want them gone it is just the fact that those people are in power and having massive sways over our institutions that is stopping this from happening and that's just clearly absurd and given we're likely to have a labor government in the next few years 
this problem isn't going away anytime soon. In fact, it's probably going to get a lot worse. So prepare for that, I suppose. But in the meantime, that's everything I had for you today. So once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.